and we are live. Welcome to another episode of Roasting Marshmallows. My name is Rolf Suth, and I'm your host. So ask someone about famous tech people, and you will get names like Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Jack Dorsey, Larry Page, Bill Gates. Um, if I were to have to fame, uh, name famous women in tech, I can come up with Marissa Mayer from Yahoo and Margaret Hamilton, the woman who led the NASA software team that landed astronauts on the moon. Uh, but it's not uh, as long as a list as the other guys. Uh, and when I was in college and university, in the eight years of education that I enjoyed, I have had about three women that were part of my class. And in the years that followed, my fellow engineers were all male, apart from a single girl who did the styling for a front end that we worked on. Uh, why is it that it, uh, it's so, such a small presence of women in tech than men? Um, is it a role model thing? Is there a gender stereotype that says that boys are better at math and science? And uh, I must admit that the number of women did increase in later years. One recent assignment had a former teacher getting a crash course in Java and uh, joining our team as a back-end engineer. And even more recently, I have had the opportunity to work with Ankita Sani, a way more experienced engineer than the one I just mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, there she is. He, uh, she calls herself an athlete, athlete at heart and an engineer by mind. Uh, hiking, biking, diving keeps her sane and coding makes her go insane. She remembers writing her first line of code in BASIC when she was 10, followed by coding in C, C++, Java during her schooling years, and this piqued her interest in the field of tech. Uh, she's one of those Indians who actually wanted to be a software engineer and was not forced by her parents to become one. <laughs> All right. Professionally, she's been a woman in tech for almost a decade now, who has tried her hand at only seven different languages now and is still craving for more. Yeah, welcome, Ankita. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, glad to have you on the show as well. This is your second time yeah. here, right? Yeah. So you're super comfortable now with uh, hearing, hearing your own voice and stuff. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I think uh, the last time it wasn't aired on YouTube, right? So now you're going to actually see yourself as well. No, I think it was it on, YouTube on YouTube as well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed it. I wasn't there for that episode. So, all right. So, uh, and uh, as a first here on Roasting Marshmallows, we have a second guest uh, at the campfire, uh, Mike Fissendijk. Almost. She's 29 almost. years old. <laughs> sorry? That's almost my name. Yes. <laughs> oh, did I did I ruin it? Mike Fissendijk. I will do this part yeah. of the intro uh, for myself. Yeah, I'm, right, I'm yeah. Mike Fissendijk. Of course. All right. Fissel, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shall yes, I do the rest? Please. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Mike is uh, 29 years old and she started working in IT almost four years ago, coming from a totally different background. Uh, she has studied human movement science because she has always been an active and sporty person and she finds the human body and health very interesting. She decided to move away from becoming a researcher and to focus on the fun. Uh, she had refactoring algorithms in MATLAB that she had to run to analyze data during the masters of her study. And she started a traineeship in IT in 2017, and from there she started working at a big insurance and banking company, where she recently made the step to really focus on growing as a TypeScript developer. Welcome, Thank Micah. You. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing that I got the foreign name <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Exactly, I, I you are done, right? right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, very very sorry That's about okay. that. That's okay. It is typically Dutch to say my last name wrong, actually. So uh, okay. So I'm not the yeah. first then. Okay. Cool. All right. So. And you're not going to introduce me? You, what is this selective? Uh... Oh, shit, man. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, because you're a guy, right? So, yeah, of course, we have the, the regular Enric Santana de Miranda. Yeah, good enough. I, I can accept. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it has to be a little bit better. As yes, well, but uh, we're going to skip for that part. Yeah. Okay. Maybe next time. So what's your experience with women in tech? Well, I think it's uh, definitely what you, your introduction is true. I think when, when I actually was in uh, the university, it started with six women in my class out of 45 people, and it finished zero mm -hmm. <laughs> out of like 30 people. Damn. So I found that uh, pretty interesting. And all the, uh, mostly the, in the beginning of my career, the women that was working with my teams, they were either designers or they were UX or they were doing mm -hmm. anything else but well, let's per se, developing. So I agree with you that it's changing now, but in the beginning was uh, much lower. And it is, uh, yeah, curious to understand why. Which is interesting, right? Because I think uh, I read an article somewhere that in World War II, uh, they said that women were like human calculators, like during the war and stuff. So they were like super good at math. Um, and then 
like during the years later, somehow the focus shifted back to to guys for for these kinds of jobs. So, wha- how do you I guys see it? Let's yeah. put the women to talk then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, like, how, what do you feel? How do you guys feel about that, or you girls, I should say? Well, I've seen. Oh, I thought somebody else was speaking. Ah, uh, this is weird. Oh, I've seen that move. We. In, uh, in which there were you, dude. This is weird. Are you so getting lag? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you have an echo. Okay, so yeah. uh, maybe Micah, you can start maybe uh, explaining your experience. Uh, uh, like, uh, how how do you see the IT industry? Maybe before you came, like, if it was something that you could consider uh, uh, joining. Um, yeah, so for me, it was never really an option to go into tech or IT. Um, mm-hmm. And that's mainly because of how I grew up. Um, mm-hmm. um, my family would have definitely supported me if I would have wanted to work in IT. But um, yeah. yeah, my brother is three years older than me, and he was always very busy with computers, with tearing them apart, with building them again, yeah. uh, gaming, um, that's basically all he did, um, being inside yeah. behind a computer. Um, and yeah, that's definitely how I also associated IT, to that you had to be yeah. loving a geek. computers, like the physical computer yeah. itself. Yeah, every aspect of it. Yes. And um, yeah. my mom also uh, rolled into uh, IT. She she first was a secretary, but her company um, yeah basically asked her to join uh, the first IT department that they had because she uh, yeah. she worked with uh, with a lot of files. Um, and yeah, the the dinner table talks were a lot about the physical things of IT, so servers yeah. and hardware. And um, yeah, for me, that's still not an, uh, uh, a very interesting part of IT, I guess. And at that yeah. time, it was, yeah, for me, that was IT. Like the whole development yeah. part of building applications or software. Um, yeah, I really never associated it with IT or as an option for me to uh, yeah. to do, but did you see as it? And the, and the model. Did you see like as a, as a man thing? Yeah. IT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I only oh, knew I only that. knew guys yeah. who wanted to be with computers all the time, and uh, yeah, I definitely yeah. wanted to be outside and run around and be sportive, and that's also why I, in the end, chose uh, studies that. Yeah, has a lot to do with being active. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that was and me so and my family uh, yeah. doing the computer stuff or trying to fix things or trying to assemble, deassemble, whatever I could lay my hands on. And uh, I have a younger brother who was following the same path, but I think they realized how good it is to be in IT or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe he got inspired a little bit from me. So also, your, your daughter yeah, followed your it. steps. Yeah, I think uh, the the generation after me uh, is in IT. Most of them are in IT. Then, uh, then the people who are older to me, my cousins. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's interesting because you're, of course, from 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 India and. Um, this is of course a different culture. So, but is it is it also there that uh, you know IT and tech and geeky stuff is more of a guy thing, or is is the representation of women in tech a big bit larger there? Because I know, like I've been in the Philippines, for example, and then the Far East Asia. Um, there, it's 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 a lot more normal to be a, a female coder. Oh no! I, in Western I Europe. think the ratios were very similar to what you mentioned. Uh, even in okay. even where I studied, uh, it was around. 10 to 2, so, yeah, uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> and, how, and how does it feel to be uh, to be the only, or well, one of the only girls in like a guy's club, like, do you guys got excluded a lot, for example, from, 
from activities at, at work or? Oh no, I feel I feel special. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's one way to look at it. That you can do something which yeah. uh, which is not common among uh, among women. Uh, yeah. But I think my interests or the topic that I used to. Uh, topic that we used to talk about, uh, I, mm -hmm. I was quite comfortable with those. Maybe a lot of women aren't, um, but I was quite open to discuss those things, uh, whatever lunch table talks that we have, uh, no matter if it goes in your favor or not, or if it's a gender discussion, uh, I was always up for it. So I yeah. never, yeah, I don't mind talking about anything. So I think that, uh, that yeah. worked in my favor. And so this might be a dangerous question, but you said you're like, oh, it made me feel special. But do you think you also got special treatment because you were a girl? Uh, <laughs> that goes for both of Maybe. you. Huh? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> well, it, yeah, of course, I'm going to ask the same to Micah. But like, if you don't know, that's fine as well. But I'm just curious, like, are you aware that these things happened? Did they happen? Well, you have no idea. Oh, they do happen, uh, but it can it can make you think in a different way. So I have instances which I would want to share later, like when we come to it. Uh, sure. Yeah. But it did make me feel uh, or question myself, my capabilities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And Micah, how is it for you then to be, uh, yeah, one of the few women probably, I don't, I've, I've actually never been in a team with you, so I don't know the ratio for you, but was it the same as well? Um, like very few? The first thing that I started at was only with, uh, with men, um, but I've never experienced from my direct colleagues, uh, especially, mm -hmm. I never really experienced any negative uh, consequences or um, that they doubted my capabilities. Um, and um, yeah, after that, I actually was always in a team where uh, almost half of the team was were female. Um, okay. But um, yeah, I think for me, it is definitely more um, not my direct colleagues who question if I am capable of being someone who is technical um yeah oh, really yeah and how do you get these 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 rumors then if it's like from outside of your team um, is it like uh, in the in the hallway where people say like hey this and this person said something about you yeah from like people from the departments or from other teams they are like surprised that i am doing something technical um and they also just blur it out. They're like, oh, uh, I thought you were like from HR or something because you are really good at communicating. Or, oh, I thought you were the scrum master of the team, which I was at some point. Uh -huh. um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I was that doing that on the side, basically. And yeah, they yeah. they were just like, oh, I didn't know do you, you knew anything about the actual content. Um, and you think and you think it's because you're a woman, or did they actually say that? Well, because you're a girl. Because like, yeah, if you can, if you're really good at communicating, maybe then that makes it uh, surprising to them, and maybe not the fact that you're um, a real woman. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I'm not sure, of course, but I do think it's right, it's yeah. yeah the I think it's because you are a woman. Because yeah. uh, I don't consider myself bad at communicating, and nobody yeah. ever doubted me if I said, "Oh, I can code." Everybody looked at me like, "Oh, cool," you know. <laughs> it's like nobody care ever came to me and said, "Oh, you are so good at communicating." I never <laughs> expect that you're gonna be a developer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I never heard uh, it. Yeah. So when people don't know what I actually uh, am busy with, then yeah, they mm -hmm. they estimate me as a person who is not per se yeah. technical. Yeah. Okay. But do you feel do you feel taken less seriously then than someone like a different team member that does the same work that you do? But then do you feel that uh, yeah people from outside the team take you less serious? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and and do you do you do something about that? Like or do, is it like well okay comes with the territory or because I don't know how that feels right? So how do you deal with something? Like um. That? Yeah, it depends also how it's being brought to me um, mm -hmm. also the person if the person is just sort of a bit ignorant 
um, then it's yeah. fine. I can laugh it away and just say like, hey, uh, the fact that I'm blonde and uh, a girl doesn't mean that uh, I cannot code or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in a way, it does affect me because I am not working for a long time in IT and my background is not IT. So yeah, of course I have mm -hmm. my doubts about my own skills too. And then if someone just basically based on how I look or the fact that I have a certain yeah. gender uh, doubts what I can, yeah. then yeah, that that is that has some impact. Yeah, and, uh, and the doubts never go away, right? Like it's called imposter syndrome, where even if a company is going to hire you for you know, for all your qualities, then still you're going to be doubting yourself like them, you know, am I capable of doing this job? So I don't think that ever goes away. But yeah, And I think the difference is like, yeah. because I guess uh, for us, probably people doubt us as well. They don't say it. And I think mm -hmm. with you guys, they people actually voice it. Yeah, they make a joke out of yeah. it. Yeah. Well, with me, uh, men voice it. Yeah, exactly. Men uh, voice it, not yeah. other women. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the instance that I have is uh, from a previous uh, employer where uh, in a closed door meeting where they were all men uh, mm -hmm. and the director addressed uh, the people who were supposed to take interviews like the following weekend. So there was a women drive uh, because we wanted to get our uh, gender, uh, what do you call it? Equality. like Den Gender ratio, correct. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so there was a women-centric uh, hiring drive, and uh, <coughs> well, most as most of the engineers are men, most of the recruiters were also men, um, and they were told to lower the lower the bar. They said it's okay, we need to meet a number, so do it. And uh, I was one of the one of the people recruiting that weekend, one of the interviewers, mm -hmm. and uh, but I was not a part of that meeting. And this happened before lunch, and during lunch. My colleagues who were a part of the meeting were just venting out stuff from me, like, and then it came to my knowledge that this is what was discussed. And if I get to know that the quality bar is lowered to hire women, then I question myself that whether I was hired on a lower bar. Yeah, so yeah. that sets in, and then you start questioning yourself. And as Rolf mentioned, then the imposter syndrome will kick in. And so you qu start questioning yourself. At every step. And the interesting thing is they also made that choice in a room full of men without the women yeah. involved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the men are venting on yeah, exactly. me. Exactly. And then they are upset at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. I, I don't per se understand uh, why that is. but. Uh, well, there is a push, right, to have more women in, in top positions and stuff. That I can so understand. I guess that's... But I, I cannot understand yeah. is like that you get in a room with a bunch of guys to decide mm -hmm. how things are without having the women in the room, if you have them, right? In that case, right. they had, and Kita was yeah. there, and they could have spoken to her, and they decided not to do that, right? It's like... A, and that's the part that I found it yeah. very fascinating, but... Uh, and okay, I have a question to you guys, because I remember a long time ago when I had yeah university and there was this uh, this six women, but they said repeatedly they actually prefer to work with men than working with women. Do you guys have the same? No, but I, I don't even prefer working with a certain kind of. Men. <laughs> So if I say I don't prefer working with a certain kind of women, it would not be that I do not prefer working with yeah. women. So I have friends who are brilliant at uh, the same work that I do, and I would love to work with them. So it's not the case for me. Yeah, yeah I I am a bit in doubts about it. Um, I think I do like w working with men. I sometimes find it just a bit easier. Uh, women can be uh, emotional and um, yeah, maybe holding grudges more. Um, but yeah, right now I'm in a team with um, multiple women and I really enjoy that. I really enjoy that we can also talk about, uh, it's easier to talk about other stuff than work with them and mm -hmm. it just mixes up 
also the yeah the insights and um, yeah you you have more how do you say that sort of quality checks or something you just look at things just a little bit different yeah so uh, if you communicate well within your team then uh, I think it's uh, it's really beneficial to have a good mix yeah and and yeah, are any other guys trying to get that mix or it just came to be that you have uh, almost half women half men the same I think it team. just came to be yeah and like all these women are also like you for example trying to uh, uh, get better at TypeScript development or were there also backend developers there uh, or what kind of roles do these women have um, one of them is UX designer um, one of them just moved from being a developer to being more on the business side. So she just moved to yeah. business an analyst and there's another front end developer. And yeah, I'm yeah. mainly focusing on, on backend. So I think we have basically yeah. uh, one woman in every, uh, yeah, so field. you have the perfect yeah. mix. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sounds uh, sounds pretty nice. And what kind of product are you guys? Can you can you tell us something about that, or um, is it something complex or confidential? Uh, <laughs> is it confidential? Yeah, if you cannot say anything, then you cannot, right? That's fine as well. Um, yeah. So, um, like, is it a customer-facing app or something yes, internally? Yes. Yeah, it's a B two B app. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Then if I go like in a different angle, like. I don't know, have, because Maika, when she said that her first team, she was the only women. Uh, I don't know if for you and Kita, she also had the experience that you are the only women in the team. Yeah. I okay. know that guys are sometimes very annoying, like very stupid jokes, very boring conversations. And like, do you guys experience that? How do you guys see it? Like you being the only women with a bunch of uh, geek guys talking about superheroes and video games and whatever nonsense jokes we do mm -hmm. are we like that dumb as people say or <laughs> you can be for <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> no i think as i said my interests matched with at least some people yeah. so it has always been easier for me yeah uh, uh but i know people who face difficulties like i know people who do not drink and would not go out with the team because everybody else would be drinking. So this this happened in India and uh, then you start feeling left out and then you start making it a gender thing, but it's only about uh, your preferences, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Then if, and as I said, if it starts to bother you, you start building things in your head and you keep making it a gender thing, uh, yeah. which it is not. And do you guys feel that uh, that you're held to different standards than men? Like, for example, let's say I show up at work without like combing my hair, right? I just get out of bed, you know, put on some clothes, brush my teeth, and get to work. Like, if you guys do the same, do you think you're gonna get called out on it quicker than men? Like, for uh, yeah, like because you know, certain men might hold women to a certain standard where they need to look a certain way or to have like oh, women as well, or to have a certain set of clothes on. Oh, women I'm also sorry? hold other women as modest or other women, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever experienced something like that. No, then I just call myself a back in India, no crazy stuff. <laughs> No, but I, yeah, I do think that, uh, that, uh, I get impacted by the idea that I'm supposed to wear fancy clothes and, um, put on makeup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but nobody ever gave you a sign or anything. No, no, yeah. no, but it's also, yeah, it also depends of course about, uh, on your colleagues, like if you are on a department where everyone is just also the men are just wearing a uh, jeans and a t-shirt and nothing fancy then yeah at some point i also adjusted to that mm -hmm. and now i also walk around in just jeans and a t-shirt um and i feel comfortable with that so that's nice because that's actually my uh, preferred clothing um but um yeah i think 
there is also uh, a branch in my company where uh, everyone walks around in suits. So when I then yeah. would walk around there as the it -er, I would feel very underdressed. That's funny because if I would yeah. wa walk in that part, I would just be total fine with my jeans and t-shirt and I would like, why is people wearing suits? Is this like a waste of time? <laughs> But is, is, that a, is that a confidence thing, maybe? Like where, like in general, men might be easier to be confident in their own appearance than the average woman is? I do uh, think it's both. But I, I yeah. think it's also like because I had this friend and uh, he told me like uh, at some point like, oh my God, this woman has come with the same t-shirt like three days in a row. And I'm like, what the hell, man? Who cares? You know? And like... Uh, and I definitely, because I'm all into this merino wool thing, I use my T-shirt like uh, mm -hmm. two weeks in a row. So if people are going to... I never heard any complaint about me, you know? And somebody was complaining about her wedding for three days in a row, the same T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that also women hold up higher standards for women uh, when it comes to how they dress than mm -hmm. they do for men. So it's not something that is coming from men towards women. I think it's just more right. society standard that women, yeah, they are supposed to look more classy or something or more elegant. Um, yeah. I don't think okay. that's typical for IT or it's something that is coming from men. Right. I, I do have an interesting uh, well, case, I guess. Uh, I experienced this with uh, with Ankita. I don't know if she remembers that. But we did, uh, we were interviewing a candidate, and she was a woman. And she was, uh, yeah, she was a good look woman. and But she was lacking a little bit of the, the technical skills. And I remember when we were discussing, we were both biased by accepting her, even though her skills were not as good, or she didn't present the skills as good as some other candidates, that they were men, we had a hard time, like me and her, me being a man and her being a woman. And I remember talking with a lot of people about this, and I think it's really, and I don't understand why is that, but uh, that was a, it was a tricky thing to say no. Do you remember that, Ankita? Yeah, I remember it, yeah. But we had, I think we had entirely opposite uh, reasons to do it. Like I was, I didn't want to say no, thinking that I don't want to hire another woman in the team. <laughs> like, <What? laughs> I think we just, yeah. And uh, your reasons were that you did not want to say no to uh, the woman. Yeah, it felt like... And why yeah. did you not want another woman in the team then? That's yeah, that's a good, a good start. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted it. Like, it's not that I did, don't want a woman in the team, but the technical skills weren't good enough to hire. Oh, but right. if right. I say yeah. no, I did not want it to be felt that I'm saying no yeah. for this season. Yeah. So it was a hard time coming to a conclusion. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, this raised the question in my head that uh, will you be biased to a woman if the same uh, if the woman has the same technical skills as a man? So if you're hiring four scouts and you have a woman candidate and a male candidate and you like them both, but you can hire only one, uh, mm -hmm. would you be biased? Probably. Why? I don't know why, but probably would be biased. And, and I think my fear on that interview was that people would say, oh, you rejected her because she was a woman. Yeah. Yeah, but what if we hired her? Then maybe they would say, oh, you hired her just because maybe. she's a woman. Like it can go either way. Yeah, right? it can go either way. And I think, yeah. Yeah, so, but in the end, we, we concluded on it when we uh, decided to look or read, read a feedback about her uh, mm -hmm. being gender agnostic. So we removed everything else out of it and we just read it and we're like, okay, if it was a guy, we would have rejected. Yeah. So why not her? Yeah, but, but then when yeah. we did that, we read it. And then we tried to be very objective, but then we said, well, because it's a girl, we want to give her a chance. Yeah. So I hear a lot like, oh, yeah, girls, they don't get the same chances and the women, they don't get the same thing as men get. But in my experience, that has been always different, at least here in Holland, that I do think they get a chance because they are women. I don't know in the end on yeah. the negotiation salary and opportunities, like, but like, at least on interviews becomes really 
biased towards hiring or giving them a chance at least. Yeah. And but, that, but, that's, but that's interesting, right? Because you also hear a lot of stories about women in interview getting these questions about like, are you married? Are you planning to have babies soon? Um, right, so then it, it goes the other way around. Like, okay, we have a female here that might, uh, might go on parental leave for a year. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon like have you guys ever experienced something like that as well where you get like specific questions that have nothing to do with the actual job or the position that is open but about being a woman oh, no not me no no okay that's, well, that's good. good right so then we're yeah. making progress here i yeah. do think that um, the, yeah. when i was hired um, mm -hmm. um the manager that was uh, was hiring did say to me that they were looking for a female, that they had the preference for a female, mm -hmm. but um, he really focused on the fact that he really liked uh, my background and um, the interview. So he did, yeah, um, yeah they wanted to mix up the, the only men team uh, with, a, with a female, so they were having yeah. preference to uh, to a woman but yeah i never felt like i would have not been uh yeah uh yeah and i didn't feel like i was chosen because i am a woman mm -hmm. not but right. because i was the better candidate yeah yeah okay and like, how is it uh, <clears throat> now that you, uh, Micah, because you first, you studied for something else, but you ended up here in, in, the, in the tech industry. Um, so I don't know, do you have any work experience in uh, you know, the, the, the stuff that you studied for? Um, body and health and uh, physicality um, stuff? No, I did, uh, I did do uh, an internship, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a bit... But are the worlds comparable, like uh, mm. in terms of like men-women ratio? No, no. I would say that in uh, yeah, when you study human movement science, you basically get educated to become a researcher. That is the area yeah. where the most jobs are, um, mm -hmm. and I think the the ratio there is uh, sixty women, forty men. So. Okay. Um, yeah, during my studies, there were always more women, but not extremely uh, yeah. out of balance or something. Yeah, it's almost 50-50, oh. yeah. so that's pretty yeah. good. And but uh, like, if you just like look back at your internship, like, do you think the dynamics in the team were different because you know the the mix of of men and women was a bit more even compared to you know some teams that you may have been in where you were the only female. Um, no, I don't think that there's a difference. I think like Ankita also okay. said, it's more about the personalities of the people. Yeah. Um, like the, the the team that I was in where only men were in, um, they yeah. were not really looking for social conversation. They were just there to do their job because they enjoyed it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then they went home to their families and their kids. Um, so there was yeah. for me, not a lot of, um, yeah, binding. Um, they never wanted to go out for drinks or that sort of things. So, okay. yeah. yeah. But I think that's uh, like that's just that. because they were like that. Yeah. yeah, they were just like, hey, I'm here to work, nine to five, want to go home, yep. I'm done, yeah? Yeah, that's, uh, that's okay. And, uh, and uh, Akita, you mentioned that you wanted to be an engineer from the start, as opposed to, to Michael, who studied something different. Uh, what was it that made you want to, uh, yeah, to really go into to the technology uh, side of things? Oh, uh, as I mentioned, or as you mentioned, uh, that uh, well, the first line of code that I wrote was just yeah. uh, it was in basic, but it was just calculating stuff. So it was basic mathematics yeah. and. Uh, uh, in coding and I don't know what peak my like I got interested it in it that particular point of time and it just continued yeah. to stay uh, and when I continued studied computers in my schooling it just kept growing so yeah otherwise as well I was interested in video games etc other stuff 
okay. I was very intrigued about how things work. So I'll open a radio transistor and see what's happening inside. So electronics, computers. Uh, yeah. That made me realize that I should go in this field. Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah because what I was wondering is like uh, in, in, in the start, I met like all these famous people. And, um, you know, for a lot of men, um, of boys maybe, like certain role models are also oh, okay. a reason for them to, to, to start uh, doing something. Um, so I don't know if you guys, uh, if you ha have had any role models, like female role models, um, and do you think we need more of them or do you think it should not matter? You think uh, a young girl seeing like, a, I don't know, the legacy of a Steve Jobs and she can aspire maybe to something similar as well to that. Do you, do you think the gender matters of a role model? I think it does. Uh, yeah. Well, of it's course, to uh, to Steve Jobs can things. inspire uh, inspire you, but re I think now I feel representation matters, like not in terms of tech only, but in otherwise uh, in all other aspects as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see representation, it gives you confidence. So yeah. uh, I do remember, like in my teens, uh, there was news about uh, a NASA. Uh, rocket collapse uh, at that point of time. So Kalpana Chawla mm -hmm. was in it, and I think she became a role model for like a lot of Indian girls. So she was the NASA astronaut who died in that oh. crash. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I think I specifically remember her, and that probably made me continue uh, working in the field of tech or something related to. Yeah. Tech. And do you guys follow? people in particular, um, like, I don't know, read books or blogs or whatever about certain individuals? Individuals, you mean like women individuals? Or women? Women in tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, yeah. I do have a woman that I follow from IBM, uh, but others are males. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, Mike, I do follow some, some people, uh, some women on, on Twitter. Um, like yeah. women in tech. I'm not sure about their names, mm -hmm. actually. I am very bad with names. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. It, it definitely helps me um, to see people who started out like me, um, not mm -hmm. not in started in, in IT, but changed over the years or um, out of studies. Um, and then especially when they are women, it definitely helps, yeah. 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 Go ahead, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you think that these 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 women deserve a, a larger a larger platform or a larger spotlight because they're women, mm. or, or do you think that uh, yeah, it's fine how it is right now? Well, uh, I think it is not fine that men uh, still treat women as if they are objects. Um, and they are not valued for their skills mm -hmm. or their, um, yeah, what they can deliver. Um, mm -hmm. Like when you see what I see on, on those Twitter accounts is that they, they have a tweet where they have a video of them explaining something yeah. technical and then their replies exist of men commenting how pretty they are. Um, okay. Like, when do you see that with a, with a man? If a man posts something, a video, or explaining something, he will never get judged on his looks. Well, like every podcast I tell Rove how good he looks. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's true. I but that's that an exception. Yeah. Yeah. I well, I mean, I do remember yeah. that, that, that one instance, sorry, Ankita, I just want to give a, a small example here, but uh, I do remember that one instance where there was this mugshot of this criminal, but he was like a super pretty dude, right? So then there was a, a lot of women who said like, oh, you know, this guy can break into my house <laughs> any night of the week. <laughs> but uh, I guess, you know, it definitely happens all the time with women, right? And with men, I agree, it's yeah. the exception, for sure. Sorry, Ankita, uh, go ahead, what uh, you trying to say? I have a... Uh, I have a question that if yeah. you if you're on uh, if you're doing an interview and the interview panel consists of a woman and a male, uh, who do you think holds the power to hire you, or who would you 
want to impress. Like yeah, I get I get your question. Uh, yeah, like it's related to one of the interviews that any can I did, and I felt that the guy. Oh just yeah, felt that's that true. He, yeah. yeah, one of the interviews they basically disregard Ankita entirely. They pretend that she yeah. did not exist, even though she had more okay. power on the hiring than I did. Yeah, interesting. And but the guy, uh, yeah. So I gave suggestions, I gave inputs to him, and uh, I didn't feel that he was listening. But he, but if any, could just cough. He would listen to him. Uh, so the question is, how did that make you yeah. feel? Well, it made me feel really bad, but then uh, the result would have made him feel bad. And so is that a reason yeah. for you to not hire that person? Well, I would not prefer working with that person. Yeah, so it's a reason so for you not to yeah. hire that person. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you believe that the reason he disregarded your input was because you're a girl? That's but because why, maybe I, that's it's why the, I asked the question, like, how, how do you perceive yeah. it? Uh, because, because maybe it's the, it's, the, it's the delivery, right? Like maybe, and he gives his suggestions in a different manner than you do, which... I think in that case, it's because she was a girl. It was, it, it, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah but there, it, it right? was so clearly, it's like, because we are doing a pairing session together and uh, her suggestions yeah. were basically spot on and the guy would just pretend that he did not hear. And I could basically two yeah. minutes later say the same thing, and he would say, "Yeah, good point." Uh -huh. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty awful, actually. Yeah. So, like, uh, do you guys experience that on your job? This concept of mansplaining, when you try to explain something, and a man is trying to explain it back to you. Yeah, I face that. So it happens. So I was. Okay, because because I am actually because I don't even I, I thought mansplaining was like men complaining about stuff, but like can you explain to me what mansplaining is then? Because I don't even know. It's a man trying to explain very something very very obvious to you um, as a woman, yeah. um, mm -hmm. um, but then in a way that it is it should be very clear that you already know this. Yeah. So it's like the woman so is trying to explain to you something. Now I'm doing with Micah, right? And then uh, I'm explaining exactly what she's explaining. I'm not letting her talk because I need to explain as a man. So this literally is like me yeah. explaining. Yeah, just totally uh, diminishing yeah. any of your intellect or uh, yeah, the fact yeah. that you can think for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Micah, you just experienced man yes. explaining here live. I just want to say that <laughs> okay. was for the example, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. But like, okay. But as a question, do you so guys he, experience that, yeah. like daily base, weekly yeah, base, yeah. monthly base? No. Oh. Not within. No, not within I, my work. No. Okay. No, I faced it. Yeah. By yeah. Rove. Yeah, every day. <laughs> mm. Seriously, <laughs> really? <laughs> but maybe I maybe I don't even notice it because it's so normal. Yeah, because I, I can I I've seen several times these examples as well, and then uh, uh, mm -hmm. the woman is explaining, and then nobody listens. A bit and a bit different of version, right? And then a few minutes later, the guy say, and then the woman, this is what I just said, you know, yeah. and nobody listens to it. Do you guys experience that version then? Um, n n luckily, not not within my team, okay. not so not daily, no. uh, but I think. It's also a bit hard to say because, well, I haven't been to to an office for about one and a half years, so I, it mm -hmm. is less regular that you just bump into someone who doesn't really know you yeah. as a person. So, but I've had it. I've had it with drinks during drinks with other colleagues, like not on my team. That that you're just like yeah I are you thinking I'm stupid or what what is going on here like I I know these things um, yeah so I I have experienced it but luckily I don't have yeah. it every day and you are Kita I, I I think I face it quite <laughs> often uh, but then I don't know whether it's a Google Meet glitch or uh, <laughs> or uh, so why 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 why, like why are you protecting them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not protecting anybody, but uh, this can lead to two things. I think uh, well, 
maybe you would uh, continue doing it uh, maybe a little louder the next time or you would stop uh, you'd be like yeah so the which Let which strategy do you themselves. take i have to become louder <laughs> interesting yeah i think i think i i think you no know, i do that a lot as well but i don't think i do that per se on gender but i probably do that uh on people and yes. i it's something that i need to uh yeah watch myself and i think that's also the dangerous part is that i don't think i do because you are a woman for example i think i do the same to Rolf when we are in a heated discussions or like arguments or whatever but it's uh and you guys just mentioned something about for example yeah having drinks like and i read so many horrible posts on twitter and on linkedin about how women experience this uh, relationship with some with some men uh do you guys have like bad experience or experience that you find okay this is definitely not the way how it's supposed to be that you go out with your colleagues and then yeah you experience people crossing the line i think What's my that? connection just drops a little bit so um, <laughs> i didn't i didn't follow everything yeah, that's a, yes that's exactly I, I i i feel yeah. i feel i fear some uh fears no but like yeah, yeah go, so ahead. go ahead go ahead all right, so the question is then, uh, y you know, at the Christmas party, have a few drinks too much, and then a male colleague, you know, asks the wrong questions or is a bit too touchy-feely, you know, crosses the line, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Like, did stuff like that ever happen? Yes. And so what do, you, what do you do? Do you, like, report it? Or is it like, well, you know, you're used to it by now? or Because that's bad as well, right? Yeah, I it, I don't think it ever came to my head to report anything. I think that is. Um, so I think it's a is a problem that has to be dealt between you and the person. Or was it even dealt? Or was it even dealt? Yeah. Yeah, I I maybe I'm a bit of a conflict further here, but um, yeah, I it's it is already uncomfortable enough. To have to experience mm -hmm. that, and then yeah. to have to go to a person because you don't want to get a person fired over something that's still very innocent. But is it innocent? I I know a case where where it happened. It was reported and it was dealt with it nicely, although the person was was fired. Uh, but it's. Uh, it's not in the end. So, yeah, I think what happened was right uh, because if you don't report it, uh, it's gonna happen to somebody else. Yeah. 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 Well, I I also know, um, like with a with one of the managers that I had that did this, I did make like a sort of joking comment back like hey you you can't really say that i could report this to hr um and he kept doing it and then another colleague of mine also said something about it and then he was really shocked mm -hmm. like that it was just a joke and that it's just very innocent and that sort of things um yeah, but so but for, yeah. for his point of view is innocent, but for the point of yeah. view of the women is not, right? I guess that's yeah. The, uh, especially he doesn't understand probably the fact that he has a hierarchical power uh, yeah. power yeah. over you. That I just have the feeling okay, I should just let this go because yeah, mm -hmm. he's my manager. He he probably doesn't mean it or something. You just also start to doubt your own. Um, yeah, uncomfortableness. Yeah, you doubt um, the interpretation yeah. of the event. Yeah, so yeah, I I do think it's an issue, but yeah, I don't per se know what what the the best solution is. Yeah. yeah. And I guess this happens in all fields as yeah. well. Yeah, but definitely. Uh, but I guess yeah, but yeah, yeah, it definitely 
happens more in environments where there are more men. Yeah, exactly. The disproportional yeah. number yeah. of men over women, and it's uh, is definitely a change. And I, I, yeah. I have a around the same line, but more like this. It's now Chonkita. Does it happen also then women with women? Sadly, it is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, right. So, no. 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 It is not happening to me ever. Yeah. So, but I, as I said, I know an instance where it happened and it was reported, and I, I admire her for doing it uh, mm -hmm. because it took the route. Like, it, yeah, it was a very harsh path. Yeah. That the whole thing took uh, but yeah. in the end i was really happy that she did it so as i said this is like representation for yeah. me if i know somebody who has done it i can very confidently tell somebody that you should do it because i i feel that it would probably go the right path yeah, yeah. So because yeah. i think the biggest complaints they have or at least when i read it about it is like they even try to go to hr and then they just dismiss it right or you go to your yeah. manager and your manager is like yeah you probably did this, right? You brought this upon yourself, and uh, and all. The, and I think that's what makes the the rage even bigger. At least I could understand why. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to basically try to do the job correctly, and then somebody is just thinking like, "Ah, oh, you are overreacting," that might. Yeah, yeah that, I can I can imagine why this is very horrible experience. Yeah. Has it happened and to you? And to me, all the time, man. All these guys jump on me and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I and do you do you think that uh, that women ever do it to men? Yes. I and how do you I, experience I, that? I I think no, see. they do it. Uh, but I do think um, I don't understand exactly how it is. But I think the men don't see it as an issue. At least I don't know any man that was like, oh, yeah, yeah, she touched my butt or something. And then, then the man complained. Somehow the man, <laughs> I think he takes as a, as a compliment. So your butt was touched? Yeah, it was. <laughs> and okay. uh, but I, so I don't know. I think it's just, yeah, I don't know why, but I don't think a man gets annoyed by that unless it. Yeah, I don't know. But if another man would touch your butt. Well, the thing is, they do that as a joke, right? A man to a man. Uh, no, but like in a romantic way. In a romantic way. way. <laughs> a gay man. A gay, well, no, no, but a gay man is like genuinely interested in you. Yeah, I, I think that... Do you think then would you still be... No, I, w I wouldn't be quiet, but uh, I would ask definitely, please do not do that anymore. Uh, but you wouldn't report it to each Not at first instance, no. But the thing is, I, right, th I think the difference is, I have the confidence if I report it, people will take mm -hmm. me serious. And I guess that's the, the, yeah. the main trade-off with women, right? Even if they report it, they're not going to be taken serious for their... Uh, well, acquisition. the chance is there. Yeah, exactly, the, the chance is... Uh, but, and but would they take you serious if a woman harassed no, you? definitely not. It's like, okay, this woman... Yeah, and because then they might say... Okay, yeah, okay, exactly. I'm pretty sure that's what would happen. They would, if even if I would say yeah. this to my colleagues, they would be like, jo like you guys would be like, yeah, what's wrong? <laughs> and I think that is wrong as well. <laughs> that's wrong, yeah, for sure. If you think about it, that's pretty uh, messed mm -hmm. up. Yeah. But I also think it's it's yeah. easier to do, to <laughs> make decisions on physical actions than um, like compliments that go a bit over the line. Do you have like an example of compliments that goes over the line? Um, yeah, compliments about my looks. Yeah, so coming like from uh, your like manager uh, or like, yeah. oh yeah, you're gonna make it in this uh, in this job, or you're gonna get a promotion at some point. You know, you have it all. You look good. Uh, you're pretty. Um, that sort of mm. things, yeah, they are not things that I want to hear from my manager. Yeah. Um, I want to yeah. be valued by my manager by the work that I do. Um, but like, do you think there is a difference yeah. between like they say, for example, one day you want to make a makeup, you want to look good because whatever, you're going to go for an event after your work. 
and then you come to work and somebody look oh you look great today is that a difference yeah i think so or or this is also not acceptable in your guys eyes like oh you look great today i think that's acceptable so there is a difference yeah there is a lot of context that is uh, you can give a person a compliment to make them aware that they they look good um, mm -hmm. or you can give a person a compliment to flirt with that person and there's a yeah there's just a small difference but there is definitely a difference yeah and saying that you're gonna make it or you're gonna make it big here because you look pretty is saying that that's more important than your skills yeah for a supermodel i get it for a developer it's yeah. a different story <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay and uh, did you guys also uh, it's, it's a bit of a different subject here but uh, there is some something like the the, the wage gap where a, a woman doing the same job makes less than a than a man um, and uh, yeah, I guess you need, you would need to know the the actual salaries of your coworkers. But do you guys have any experience with that as well, where some dude who does the exact same work as you makes you know twenty percent more? Or I don't know what the actual <laughs> gap is, but like uh, yeah, where you where you definitely say like, hey, you know, we have the same role, same type of experience. Maybe we've been on the job for roughly the same amount of years, and and yet he makes more than than, than me. Does that ever occur to you guys? No, this has happened to me, yeah. Yeah? And uh, for those six months I was very furious because I think I was putting in more effort than the guy and... Uh, but I got... Then, and I, I, I think I made it quite clear to my manager because it yeah. was in my head. Uh, I was very clear about it that I feel this. Mm -hmm. uh, and the guy was making probably 20% more than me and I got a 42% hike that time. So, uh, but it was very so you did something about it? Sorry? So you did something about yeah. it and you got, uh, you got compensated? Well, or? yeah, I, I was scared about the fact that it is impacting my yeah. work or I do feel that I'm not valued as much as the other people and I'm putting in, like I could see that I was putting in more effort. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think telling about it helped. Maybe I, I don't know what would have happened if I was not vocal about it. Yeah, your performance would decrease because you are unhappy, and then they would justify. See, that's why you were in last. <laughs> yeah. Self fulfilling prophecy, yeah. I guess. <laughs> but like, a, no, but, yeah, but like a, in the end, it helped me. Yeah, just, but like, did they consider your your request, or they treated like, oh yeah, get out from here. I listen to you, but. Uh, no, in the next cycle, I got a, I got a forty-two percent hike. Yeah. So, I thought I was heard and valued for what I did. Uh, yeah. Because. So instead of so instead of deciding to quit the company, I decided to speak to my manager because my manager. Was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that was uh, that what uh, was what I was trying to say. Um, speaking up, you know. Is, is something that you know if you just uh, yeah speak up to your manager or or, or whoever um, and and the problem can get fixed or at least addressed do you think um, that 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 females in general you know keep quiet and accept situations like like it is um, because maybe like men in general are a bit more vocal or do you think it's not a gender issue i would like to quote to here that girls are taught to be perfect and boys are taught to be brave at least in India so okay, uh, yeah. so you're not supposed to speak up or be loud uh, you're taught to be in yeah. a way since you were a kid yeah uh, and okay. boys are told to just go out right like do whatever you want to do or experience whatever you want to experience so I think uh, even if I feel different right now when I work here it is mm -hmm. going to take some time for me to change because it has only been two years. Uh, yeah. But it has changed for me over time. Yeah, yeah so it's becoming easier I, for you. Yes, yes. But then it's again like if I want to be vocal now and if mm -hmm. I don't get heard, it's like a battle. It's like, okay, do I even want to say anything now? So, but it is becoming better for me. 
Yeah. Okay. And Mike, what about you? Uh, I've not experienced it, but I, yeah, I don't really go around and ask uh, other people for their salary, so uh, I have no M clue maybe with should. that. Uh, maybe maybe should. I should. No, but uh, um, um, no, in the past. Yeah, but the speaking up part, maybe like. Uh, yeah, if there's something that you disagree with, are you the type of, of, of person to just instantly say like, hey, this is not right? Um, I do think that it takes a little bit more um, talking about it with other people before I actually do something mm -hmm. about it. But um, yeah, in the past, right. I, I've had a races already. Um, I got a promotion uh, when I asked yeah. for it. Um, so I, yeah, I do think that if I have the feeling that I deserve it, I will speak up about uh, about it and right. try to get it. Um, but maybe there is, I do think there's a little bit of a difference between men and women uh, the moment that they think yeah. they deserve it. Um, I think. Oh yes, for me after the first day, I deserve it. <laughs> yes, exactly. But uh, yeah, let's well, not talk about that's you. That's interesting, because right? You <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's interesting right like you say like i am going to ask for a for a promotion when i think i deserve mm -hmm. it and then i think men in general at least yeah, yeah. i speak for myself yeah. like I, I would try to get the promotion when i see the opportunity and maybe i don't i don't deserve it maybe i don't have the qualities but maybe it's like okay i see an opportunity yeah. here let me just see if i yeah. can do it yeah, and I think so women are a bit more in the trained, like Ankita said, like to be silent when when it is okay uh, and uh, just accept the way it is. Um, right. And yeah. just not take the risk, even though, yeah, if, if there are going to be any negative consequences of you when you are asking for a mm -hmm. raise, then maybe you're not in the in the right company. Uh, so it is a bit bullshit that it's in your head, but I, I do think that for a lot of women it is there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, to, uh, yeah, to maybe close it off here, do you have any, any tips for, for any woman listening here? Um, she wants to get into the technology industry, like maybe you want to discourage her or encourage her or uh, yeah, anything of, uh, of value for the listener here. Although I think eighty percent of our listeners are men, yes. but uh, after this episode, maybe we change, should we should try to think of a way to encourage men to encourage women to start in tech and be more open for uh, sure. to women. Maybe that's just more the okay. point. So how can we do that? How can we make you feel yeah. more welcome? Uh, stop mansplaining. Uh, mansplaining uh, <laughs> that's uh, the first one. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know. I think uh, I'm, we are now talking to two men who who are not uh, uh, biased and uh, not uh, negative to towards women um, when it comes to working in tech. Um, so we should uh, bring that guy here. Okay. Yeah. You should. Do you, do you know anyone in particular? Uh -huh. I can think of a few. Yes. <laughs> Okay. No, but uh, I do think it helps a lot when when men also um, how do you say that uh, s speak up towards other men if mm -hmm. they see any negative behavior, yeah. uh, behavior or discrimination based on gender. Yeah, I do think yeah. that's uh, yeah, a big I was one. About to s I was about to say the same that it it can help if. Uh, you can correct other men. Yeah. Uh, that would help, and I would always encourage more women to, to join because I don't think so. Uh, like coding is different for any gender, so doesn't matter at yeah. all. Do it if you like it. Yeah. yeah. If you like for it. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's cool. So, hey, do you have any tips for uh, for the female listener, maybe? Or uh, are you maybe not the right person to give it? I'm tips? probably not the right person, but I'm a man, right? So I will give it anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, yeah. the thing is, I, I read it a lot about the subject and I see the experienced people, uh, well, share it online. And I think it's nice that they, they are sharing those and making those things aware. Yeah. And uh, that makes me aware of my behavior as well. Uh, yeah, for yeah. them, 
they should try to speak up at least find one man that does not do that and maybe speak to them and eventually they will unfortunately yeah need the help of this person to as you guys said speak to the other men but uh, at least in Holland yeah. I don't experience as bad as I read in other countries like uh, US or Brazil and uh, so at least here so far I have never experienced to that decremental level but uh, yeah that that's my thought yeah yeah all right well uh, I guess that wraps it up then or should I also I, uh, yeah. come up with something yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah I, f I for sure think that uh, that women should uh, dare to take risks dare to take a chance maybe at one point um, I mean what's there to lose and uh, you know if you always wait for the perfect moment that moment might never come so sometimes maybe it's just best to uh, just go for it see what happens All right. Well, I want to thank my guests very much for being here today, Micah and Ankita. How did you uh, experience this? Oh, it was, was better it than okay? I expected. <laughs> yeah. 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 Was, uh, Michael, what about you? It was uh, a nice uh, conversation. I was a bit nervous at the start, but uh, yeah. yeah, I sort of forgot that right. this is uh, recorded and then uh, a lot of people might okay. listen to me saying stuff, but uh, <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. Are you are you gonna are you gonna listen to yourself uh, like when when this no. is live? No. Are you used to your own voice? No, no you're not. No. Okay, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I also want to thank, of course, the listener. If you have uh, any experience being a woman in tech or with the women on your team or whatever, if it is, it is that you want to share with us, then uh, you can always do so either in the comments below here on YouTube or uh, on uh, our Twitter account at Four Scouts. Of course, podcast at forcecars.nl is where you can reach us by email. And uh, yeah, if you want to send us a voice message uh, on um, our anchor page, that's also very much appreciated. All right, thanks again. Uh, and Hik, thank you as well for, uh, for being here. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of ScoutCast, Roasting Marshmallows, with your host, Rolf Sir. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit 4scouts.nl and on Twitter at 4scouts. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on ScoutCast, Roasting Marshmallows.